uh, with their campaigns for the ultimate November 4 contest, which will decide who leads the NPP going into the 2024 presidential elections. We tell you what Dr. Baumia and Kennedy Japan have been doing and saying over the period. Stay with us. And whether or not uh, if Alan Chimanting decides to go independent, whether he would have the number of party bigwigs who have declared support for him, following him um, in that particular direction. We have some analysis tonight. Stay with us here on Ghana Tonight. As always, we are part of the conversation. Let's hear from you. The hashtag we're using is Ghana Tonight on Facebook and Twitter. Let's get talking. Well, let's settle for Ghana Briefs. The Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampari, has refuted allegations of providing bad leadership to the police service. He contends that his record as the best IGP speaks for itself. Addressing the bipartisan parliamentary committee set up to probe a leaked audio tape at the center of a plot to oust him, Dr. Dampari described the allegations by his accusers as unfounded and without a shred of evidence. Probably my brother wanted to say I'm the best and he missed it. Because the records are there for everybody to see. The beauty of mankind is that everybody has an opinion and he can express it in any form or shape. And this is the point, Honorable Chair. Since my colleagues and I and the rest of the commands across the country, we committed ourselves to transforming the organization to become the best institution in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond in a teamwork fashion based on Genesis 1, 26. The Opposition National Democratic Congress is accusing the Electoral Commission of manipulation in the limited voter registration, warning that failure to call the EC to order could lead to severe consequences. Party Chairman John Sincere Dinkitia addressed the news conference in Accra. We wish to emphasize that the EC's decision to proceed with the limited voter registration exercise today, despite being served with two injunction applications from the courts, contradicts an important precedent set by they themselves during the 2023 NDC presidential and parliamentary primaries. The intervention happy ECOWAS countries. They better act to stop civilian coup d'etat from happening. The Ghana Bar Association has expressed concern over the increasing corruption cases and related activities, arguing that they are depriving the country of essential resources. The association's president, Yahweh Chan for Bafo, also criticized the MPP government for poor investment in basic education. It is our respectful view that several reported corruption-related incidents involving some of your appointees and also amongst some public officers under your administration and the largely lethargic manner with which they are dealt with and even defended and protected leaves a lot to be desired. It must be stressed that as president, the painful truth is that the back stops with you. It is enough to say that it will be a sad period for our democratic governance if such a public undertaking that gave millions of Ghanaians hope end up as a usual campaign rhetoric by a politi politician. The Ghanaian Union of Traders Association in the Ashanti region has threatened to close their shops due to customs officers harassing them. Addressing a news conference in Kumasi, the association called for an urgent government intervention. There are now what they call the regional and national task force, all operating in a duplicative manner. The same applies to the Takradi Kumasi Road beyond the Ajayan Guanta area, rules with duties duly paid and cleared at the port are many a time arrested by the task forces of person leading to extortions, delays, re-examination, which result to heavy penalties slap on owners of the goods. This has led to collapse of several businesses and relocation of others out of the region.
The Greater Accra Regional Police Command has assured the minority it would provide the necessary security for its planned protest to demand the resignation of the Bank of Ghana governor and his deputies. The service has meanwhile asked the group to comply with the routes that they have both agreed on, thus from the Obra Sports through to Adabraka, Ridge Runabout, National Theatre Traffic Lights, through to the High Court Complex Traffic Lights, Atamil's Highway, and then a U-turn to the Independence Square. The police in a statement asked the minority to ensure there is no breach of peace and should also conduct themselves in a peaceful manner before, during and after the protest. Oh, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Kofo Dampare, faces accusers at the Parliamentary Committee probing the alleged plot to oust him. We have excerpts of today's proceedings and more. In fact, reactions from the security perspective as to how things played out to today for you. And the IGP, Dr. George Kofo Dampare, has refuted allegations of providing bad leadership to the Ghana Police Service. In fact, he contends that his record as the best IGP speaks for itself. Uh, he was addressing the bipartisan parliamentary committee set up to probe the, the leaked audio tape at the center of the plot to have him removed by the president. Dr. Dampare described the allegations by his accusers as unfounded and without any shred of evidence. Take a look. Made all these allegations in order to cover up probably the shame and sweat of what they got themselves involved in in the first place. And I, an innocent person, focusing on my job, working in concert with my team and all commands across the country to keep the country safe and make it to be at peace with itself. I've been asked to come and answer to these allegations which are wide, baseless. And I feel in my spirit that this is just not fair. Rabuche, it is just not fair. Are we killing patriotism? That anybody can just get up, make allegations upon allegations, and people who go across the country at times 48 hours non without sleep, just keeping the country at peace, will be called to come and answer allegations that are unfounded. Probably my brother wanted to say I'm the best and he missed it. Because the records are there for everybody to see. The beauty of mankind is that everybody has an opinion and he can express it in any form or shape. But that has not changed the facts. And this is the point, Honorable Chair. Since my colleagues and I, and the rest of the commands across the country had opportunity by the grace of God and with the honor done me by His Excellency the President Nana Adudanko Ekufuado. We committed ourselves to transforming the organization to become the best institution in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond in a teamwork fashion based on Genesis 1:26. So even granted that I'm the worst, then all of us collectively are the worst. Now, uh, stay with me a bit on this. So we're we, we eventually going to hear from the IGP refuting this uh, latest video that actually came out, which the committee says they have cost custody of um, that captures Bugri Nabu talking about a contract that he was awarded and, and also some monthly payments and so on. The IGP today says that he, 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 he knows Bugri Nabut just like any, any one of us. He doesn't have any special relationship with him, that he's probably met him once or twice. We'll hear from him. But Richard Kumado is a security analyst, is, has some experience with the national security um, in this country. In fact, that's the Bureau of National Investigations, BNI. He's joining us uh, on Zoom. Uh, Mr. Kumado, thank you so much for your time here on Ghana Tonight. I mean, this was supposed to be an in-camera hearing. The IGP 
insisted that he wanted it to be publicized or broadcast for us all to see. I mean, it, it, was this a, a recommendation that you, from your security lenses, would support, especially because of some of the things that came out today? Definitely. Uh, we spoke for it. We pushed that the IGP should be given a public hearing. This is a public committee. Others had opportunity of making appearances to the public. If they had gone into camera, there could be some discrepancies and inconsistencies of some of the reportage about what the IGP said and what he didn't say. I'm so glad the IGP was granted opportunity to make a public hearing, and it wasn't in camera. You could bear with me that many of the questions they asked him today and the answers he provided has nothing to do with national security. And I think for once, he was bold enough, he faced the cameras, and he spoke as appropriately as possible, and I am so glad he did so. And um, after the, the, this hearing today, the chair of the committee, Samuel Atacha, in, in very typical fashion, spoke to the media. One of the things that stands out is that he says Bugri Nabu has, has finished the committee with a new tape. And Bugri Nabu is expected to appear before the committee with the National Security Minister tomorrow. And they are indicating that there is a new tape as well that's been given to the committee. So this is more like a season of new tapes and, and <laughs> leaked audios in this particular instance, isn't it? Definitely. I think uh, uh, something is not right, but whatever it is, we are law enforcement officers, we are professional. Uh, indiscretion, indiscretion has caught up with my three brothers and they should accept responsibility. In my days in the BNI, Nobody will give you the opportunity of a public hearing. They will ask you three questions, and depending on the answer you give, the first one could have sent you to prison for five years or ten years. And the questions would be, do you know you are a law enforcement officer? Yes or no. Do you know Bugri Nabu as a, a politician? Yes or no. Do you know his office? And have you had any conversation with him in his office regarding yourself and the job you do? Yes or no. If your answers to those questions are yes, Nobody will give you the opportunity to say the tape was dotted or it wasn't dotted. And it, then again, in the security intelligence, we are taught four things. One is to master cover story. Number two is to escape an entrapment. And number three is to be invasive as possible. And number four, to be loyal to the state and avoid politicians. I think in all this, three of my brothers who spoke to Bugwin Abu have breached the code of conduct and they have gone a little bit too far. And whether they are new tapes and they are not new tapes, there will always be tapes. But the particular tape in question was a tape that the committee was asked to authenticate. And the day Bukri Nabu appeared and said he did a recording, it was done in his office, he hand over the tape to the president. I think that ends it. So we should take it aside. And I'm not afraid that IGP will not be bold enough to answer many of the allegations against him. No, but I, I, do, I know that you know beyond what you personally know beyond what has already been put out in the public domain. Knowing what you know, plus what we heard today, will the in-camera hearings in the coming days make any significant difference? Definitely not. I think today's public hearing was the final. It was a showdown and it was the wet cup final. What will happen in camera? I was surprised they are even bringing the National Security Minister. It should have been the Director BNI, because the Director BNI instructed his boys to investigate the tape. Mm -hmm. And they have the full details of whatever happened. It was even at the BNI questioning. The difference is that the police will interview you, and the BNI will question you. Nobody interrogates you. Right. Interrogation is the highest level, and that is not friendly at all. It was that questioning level that the Asari and the Mensah got to know that there's a guy called Ashanti. And then he recalled that when Bugri Nabu called him, he mentioned Ashanti instead of Asari. And so to that extent, the BNI did a good job by investigating the tape. And it should be the director of BNI rather who should be invited and not the national security. After the reason being that the police is also a national security institute mm -hmm. that is being tried or that has come to the fore, and bringing a national security minister, I think it wouldn't make any difference. It should have been the director of BNI.
But having said that, go into camera, there they go to have themselves speaking to one another. And Dan Parry with his high levels of emotional intelligence, which he displayed today. I don't think he's going to throw tantrums and he's not going to be bitter as we saw in the last days. And that, that is not going to serve any other purpose apart from uh, cross creasing and they will come out with a report. But the president then will have the report and decide whether to let Dan Parry go or let him stay. You talk about emotional intelligence, indeed. That's one thing that has dominated the public reactions after uh, George Okufu Dampare's appearance before the committee today, that he was quite smart um, uh, at displaying emotional intelligence, even during the break, went around to go and greet his accusers and, and so on. And from where you, you sat watching this, what, what kind of signal was he sending during that break time, going around to, to greet his accusers and even making reference to that in one of the questions, answers that he, he posed, if, if he gave to a question that was given uh, to him. I'm one of the few people in Ghana who have been trained to interpret human emotions and use body language. And so I teach what we call creative intelligence, which is a little bit higher than emotional intelligence. And today I'm happy Dan Parry combined the two. And even though he was addressing the chairman, he was directly speaking to his colleagues and he was appealing to their conscience and he was saying that we have a job to do. There might be differences in opinions and perspectives, but my leadership style shows that I have 33 years of experience in this work. I have a PhD. I have worked with presidents. I have been around the big boys in town. Come on. I know exactly what I'm doing and you guys can attest to that one. And that is why he went to them and said, you may accuse me. But accusation is part of the job I do as an IGP. Let's go back and get a job done. And that is what he did so well that I was so happy. Even when Peter Sobo was asking him the questions, you could see he was smiling. That, hey, if you have not left the police, you would have been carrying my back uh, to this public hearing. And you could see the, the glaring and you could see the connections. And I was glad he did. I'm just saying that they should call a meeting over a cup of tea or over some Awusa Koko and Kose, bring a Bwachi and bring a, you know, a Dretabri and let the big boy come and deal with what is his win house and let the public go to sleep because we have the job to do to protect this country and to ensure our national security and national sovereignty is guaranteed. Great. Richard Kumaro, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for You're spending welcome. time with the air on Ghana tonight. Richard Kumaro, security analyst, um, work with the Bureau of National Investigation. That's a BNI then, which is NIB now, which is the National Investigation Bureau. Okay. But let's hear from uh, Samuel Atachia, who is the chair of this seven-member ad hoc committee. Spoke to the media after today's hearings. Take a look. I know on top of my head that the matters concerning the National Security Minister will be in camera, but the rest of them will take a quality decision. One of the witnesses, Superintendent Asari, said he appeared before the uh, NIB. Yeah, Aha. I heard him say that. He said so. Yeah. So if he said so, then how does that synchronize with what we are doing here and the evidence? That's what we are attempting to find. I know on top of my head that the matters concerning the National Security Minister will be in camera, but the rest of them will take a quality decision. One of the witnesses, Superintendent Asari, said he appeared before the uh, NIB. Yeah, Aha. I heard him say that. He said so. Yeah. So if he said so, then how does that synchronize with what we are doing here and the evidence? That's what we are attempting to find. So one other subject of conversation, especially amongst the general public, was that video that went viral sometime last Friday. Um, that captured Buginabu talking about some contracts with the police service and so on, and his relationship with the IGP. This came up during the interrogation today, and this was the IGP's response. Take a look. Do you have a working relationship with Chief Buginabu? Honorable Chair. We'll rectify that in a bit, and... Um, bring that video back to you but there's been some reactions on social media after this hearing today um check, take a few um take a look um these are some of the the comments on social media on this first off um this one here says the 
uncomfortable body reaction of the IGP Dampare tells he is real. It's just a real mafia in a sheep's skin. Samira Titi Danso says uh, dangerous with heavy PR works, but politically says go on and dirty with goes on and oh, sorry, we flipped that. This one here says IGP Dampare is top top guy. Composure checked, delivery checked, emotional intelligence checked. This one here says IGP Dampare has given Sami Jemfis his tone. Okay. Uh, and this one says, in fact, I think IGP Dampare's administration is actually the best so far. That's Dr. George, um, this one. Um, the commentator says IGP Dampare is on top of his job. His competence level is excellent. Nobody's perfect, but if a person is striving towards perfection, you will know. IGP, to my opinion, is doing a great job, you say. Um, it says, this one says, this NPP, COP, George Alex Mensah is simply a bitter and envious character. goes on and on. Um, yeah, okay. But let's, let's hear from um, th th that earlier video of... George Kofodampari and his response to that question about his relationship with Bugiri Nabu. Take a look. Do you have a working relationship with Chief Bugiri Nabu? Honorable Chair, I do not have a working relationship with him. If somebody alleged against you that you are the architect of the first video, you in cahoots with Chief Bugri Nabu got this individual state. What will be your response to that, sir? Honorable Chair, that is untrue. Okay. Well, so that's the response the IGP gave to this Bugri Nabu tape. And just bear in mind, tomorrow, Bugrinabu, Daniel Bugrinabu and uh, the National Security Minister are expected to also appear before the committee in camera. We understand Bugrinabu has also furnished the committee with a new tape. But he, earlier today, here's the IGP interacting with his accusers, quote-unquote, um, COP Alex Mensa, and then also Superintendent um, JB as well in the pictures you see there and then superintendent Tassari, all of them captured in the picture this was during the break time and that's what a number of you have been describing as a, some level of emotional intelligence for me but we'll see how things things play out in the coming days and especially with this income our hearings but that's it for the IGP and matters arising. Stay with us here on Ghana tonight. Coming up next, the Electoral Commission has commenced the limited voter registration exercise in all the Electoral Commission district offices across the country. This is despite being served contempt motions. Tonight, the exercise is on our radar assessment. So far, and here from the agreed parties who still have reservations. Um, so we, we monitored the situation in a uh, number of places. Applicants in parts of the Greater Accra region braved the rain to participate in the exercise on the first day. My colleague Grace Amuajiban was there. Take a look. At midday, the news team arrived at the Ablikuma West Municipal Assembly and found 19 cards issued to applicants. It was calm, but they had problems with the network at first, but everything is fine now, so I'm done. What does it mean to you You have your card now? It means I'm qualified now and I can vote. It went fast. I, I came on time and did it for me on time. It's my right to have the card for voting. And as a citizen, you have to vote. The Okaikwe South District Office experienced a slow process due to poor network connectivity and faulty machines causing delays in the start and progression of the exercise. Initially, we had some challenges with the network, which is normal, but now it's been resolved. Uh, this NDC MPP, they are all interested, but so far so good, yeah. No fights, nothing. Our next destination 
was the Ablikma Central Municipal Assembly, which had a high turnout until the rain set in. It's been ready here at the Ablikma Central Municipal Assembly, but that is the least of the worries of applicants who have turned up to go through the first day of the voters registration exercise. They tell me the card is so important to them because they want to be able to partake in the upcoming December elections and so they will go through the rain to make sure they get their card. Grace Hamwa Ajuman, CB3 News, Ablikma Central Municipal Assembly. Well, this is despite the number of injunctions that the EC was slapped with. They went ahead with the process. Stay with me because um, private legal practitioner Nick Bakpo Samoa, who is a lawyer for one of the two uh, private citizens, is going to be joining us because they have cited the EC for contempt. But let's go to the Ashanti region and the northern region. My colleagues, Ibrahim Abubakar and Christopher Marcon, are my are correspondents in those two regions joining us. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Um, first of start off with you, um, Ibrahim. In the Ashanti region, we understand that there were some technical challenges in, in, in some other areas as well. Well, Fred, exactly. Um, you know, with regards to the machine, in fact, for the Ashanti region, um, of uh, for the areas that I visited, the Askwari Mampo municipality, the Askwa, uh, Menshia, Tafo, and the likes. Um, the turnout was very, very huge for the first day. A number of the applicants, um, some who have just turned 18 and others who are beyond 18, were there in their numbers to register. But you know, um, at a point in time, the process wasn't going on smoothly because of poor network. So. For instance, at Ascore Mampon, um, within the Asawa sequence 20, you know, I mean, Ashanti region, it is one of the most populous municipality or constituency, as you say. So even as at 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, um, they had already only managed to register around 40 of the applicants who had come there. And a number of them were still in the queue because they keep complaining of poor network, poor network, poor network. So people were beginning to get frustrated, even though today generally the exercise went on smoothly. So for most of the applicants, what they were calling for is for the EC to at least um, double the registration materials within these areas so that the process will be fast for them. So. Apart from the issue of the poor network, and um, generally the election went on very smoothly. Right. One area also that the political parties decided to intervene, you know, um, there are areas where moving from where the person is to a district level to register, um, it's a bit far. And some will say they don't have transportation and the likes. So what are I was also observed was that some of the political parties decided that um, they will allocate buses just to pick these applicants to the voting centers for free because some were not ready to move to the voting center to get their ID card. So the political parties had to adopt this strategy just to be able to get the numbers. So generally, and um, that was it. But, right. you know, because, like I said, it delayed and it also right. rained and um, it slowed the process down. Also, okay. yes. Fantastic. Brian, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the northern region. And uh, Christopher, so we understand earlier uh, a parent complained about not being able to have her ward, who is 18, register and the person had to go write exams and so on. What happened? him has uh, indicated from the Ascenti region where uh, he described the exercise today as generally smooth. Uh, here in the northern region, it's not 
as smooth as uh, uh, Ibrahim has indicated from the Ashanti region. But uh, some of the issues that characterized the one of the exercise uh, look similar. For instance, poor network, uh, the rains also coming in as well as faulty uh, uh, machines uh, from the EC side. And so if you go to the Sagnargu um, EC office uh, today, for instance, uh, I was there around 8.30 until 4.30 p.m. They hadn't registered even a single uh, person. So uh, because they were resorting to the online registration process, uh, they could not uh, take part in the exercise earlier uh, because of the network challenge and some of their machines are uh, being faulty. So they had to later uh, rely on the offline registration where they just take the details of the person, go through the process, then uh, later, uh, according to them, they will input the details into their system when they are able to work on them. So uh, today, generally, for instance, like I said, at the Sagnargo Registration Center, where Tamale North constituency and the Sagnargo constituency uh, were expected to uh, take part in the exercise. The uh, turnout was high or huge, uh, but the exercise, uh, the EC officials could not register as uh, many people. Only 16 people went through the process, but that is offline. Now, if you go to the Tamale uh, Central constituency, that is uh, the main Tamale Metro Registration Center, where Tamale Central and Tamale South are expected to go through the process for the next 21 uh, days. Now, Tamale Central were able to register only three. So for that particular uh, uh, section, only three uh, applicants were able to go through successfully using the online registration and so uh, basically in the uh, tamale enclave it was uh, generally very low because of the challenges that the ec officials faced now if you move outside uh, tamale you go to saboba for instance they were able to register uh, 32 uh, you go to kumbungu that registered about 70 and other areas but the tamale community itself Africa registration today uh, was generally very, very poor. And the applicants and their parents who came with them actually uh, registered their frustrations because on the part of the EC, they felt that the EC should have tried their machines to be sure that uh, by today, start of the exercise, they would have been able to register as many people because for Tamale North, they are looking at registering over 9,000 Sanargo is looking at registering over 12,000. And if they won, they were able to attend to only 16. Then it tells you that by close of uh, the 21 day period, they will not be able to re register even up to 2,000. So it's something that is worrying to especially the party uh, people in these constituencies. Uh, very comprehensive um, information. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Christopher, I'm going to you as well. Ibrahim Abubakar, that's uh, the Shanti in the northern region, respectively. Thank you so much for, for your time here on Ghana tonight. We're hearing that in only three persons were registered in the Tamale Central uh, area, and that's about 16 for Tamale North and Saginarugu, using the offline process. So day one has been fraught with a lot of challenges uh, what we, we were hearing but the chairperson of the electoral commission Jane Mensah together with her two deputies Dr. Bosman Asari and Samuel Tete have been sued for contempt for disregarding an earlier injunction sued against this uh, voter registration exercise which started today. Precious Ayita that's a resident of uh, Ochebleko near Afienya on Friday September 8th filed an injunction against the electoral commission uh, each chair and the, the deputies over the decision to limit the voter registration exercise to their district offices. They cited affordability issues um, due to proximity. The commission, however, is going ahead with the exercise and uh, commends the registration, albeit noting it would address the problems raised by the plaintiffs. So that's why uh, the Electoral Commission has been cited for contempt. Uh, by the lawyer for this first-time applicant, Precious Ayita. The lawyer is joining us on Zoom now, Nick Bako Samoa Ado. 
is private legal practitioner, counsel for uh, Precious Ayita. Nipapo, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. So has the Electoral Commission been served this contempt suit? Yes, I can confirm that the contempt was duly filed and served on the uh, EC this morning. And so by virtue of that, uh, if they continue with what they are doing, then they are, they are knowingly not only violating the injunction application, but they are also in the face of a contempt application still doing what they are continuing to do. And clearly, they would have absolutely no uh, excuse before the court. And in such situations, we will press the court to put them into custody because if the court does not set an example with them, then anyone at all who has been served with the court process, knowing very well that the date is upcoming, would seek to undermine the very essence of the court process that has been served with the hope that at the end of the day, nothing will happen to him. We can't have that. That would be a recipe for chaos. Yet, ahead, any, any amended information from the Electoral Commission? What we do know is that they are still going ahead with this process. That's the information we have so far. Nothing to the contrary. The process, the registration has started and it's going to go on until October um, 3rd, as they have communicated. Nee? Okay. So we have done what is legally required of us and would expect that the courts would pronounce when we get there. Yes. Even if the exercise proceeds in the face of the service of the content, and I would hope that you would call Bosman Asari and find out whether they have been served with a contempt application. And if they have been served and yet they insist on doing what they are doing, then when the date is due for us to hear that motion, we would also not allow them to pitch themselves at that moment because they knowingly violated the, the said injunction application which was pending. I see, but so what would be the consequence of, of this contempt suit? In, in this situation, now that this process is ongoing, the AC hasn't indicated that it's going to halt the process as we speak. The contempt application is to commit them to custody, to, to, to jail. They're asking the court to commit them to jail because they have, in the face of these processes that are pending, decided to take the law into their own hands. Then it means the EC is one lawless organization. And if the EC which is supposed to be the arbiter in our elections, is a lawless organization, then only God can save us in this country. Because you see, this EC preaches itself and positions itself as a lawful organization that it abides by the rule of law. And so it respects court processes. So when it was served in the before case, it abided it, I said it will not go forward with any process. In fact, there were two suits on that day, if you remember. It was one by Dr. Before and it was a one by another gentleman. They insisted that both cases had to be resolved by the NDC before they would proceed to look into the election. And so that is a good precedent. So that if anybody has a grievance, they would expect that the EC will look into the grievance or allow the courts to look into the grievance before they proceed. Uh, so you are asking that the courts commit Jane, Jane, Jane Adokwe Mensa and uh, Dr. Bosman Asari and then also uh, the third person to, to jail. They should be put to jail? Yes, because they have no will. And Jermessa is a lawyer. And uh, the others have all good legal counsel. They're supposed to know better that if they've been served with those processes, they cannot proceed the way they are proceeding. Their conduct is very, very disrespectful to the courts of Ghana. And the courts of Ghana should not uphold that behavior. When is this contempt case scheduled to be heard, Nick Babo? It is going to be moved on the 16th, the same day as we have to move the injunction application. I see. But maybe be final before I let you go. What, what next for your client? I mean, the registration has started, is ongoing. So what, right now you've cited the EC for contempt. It's going to be heard at a later date. What's your counsel to your client, who also is an eligible voter and has to register? We would want to see what the, the, the EC would do in the face of having been said. We have to watch and see. 
and based upon that, we would advise them, of course, we would ensure that our client does not lose their constitutional right. It does not mean that whatever processes have been filed will not still be pursued. Not at all. So we will have to have a balancing act to ensure that our client's right to register is also upheld, whilst at the same time holding the EC accountable. Because you can't have a situation where the EC is above the law. It is a dangerous precedent that we cannot have in this country. I see. Nick Maposamado, thank you. Thank you so much for time here on Ghana tonight's private legal practitioner counsel for Precious Aita, one of two uh, private citizens taking on the electoral commission that cited them for contempt. But the chair of the electoral, that's the chair of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, Johnson Sidun Ketia, has also been raising concerns about what's been happening in some of the NDC's stronghold on day one of this registration exercise. Take a look. Over 90% of centers were not able to print out the required start of the day printout across the country. The breakdowns are politically selective. <laughs> there is not more than two centers where these breakdowns are happening, which are in the stronghold of MPP. All the rest are in the stronghold of MPP. This same judiciary can find time to grant injunctions against people who intend to demonstrate against corruption at Bank of Ghana with alacrity. And yet, that same judicial system cannot find time and space to grant such an important injunction. We wish to emphasize that the EC's decision to proceed with the limited voter registration exercise today despite being served with two injunction applications from the courts, contradicts an important precedent set by they themselves during the 2023 NDC presidential and parliamentary primaries. The intervention happy ECOWAS countries. They better act to stop civilian coup d'etat from happening. They shouldn't close their eyes on this flagrant disregard of the principles of democracy and rule of law, only to jump in when somebody overthrows that system. As John Chenese Dunketia is chair of the NDC. Coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the new Petote Party flag bearer aspirants have hit the ground running with their campaigns for the ultimate November 4 contest, which will decide who leads the party into 2024. Some interesting developments with the land chairman. That's uh, Kennedy Japan and also Dr. Mamoru Baumia in reactions to Alan Chimantin's withdrawal as well. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint we then dilute them with water and now let the test begin the gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the flamingo superior paint as you can clearly see flamingo has the obvious better hiding furthermore flamingo has painted a much larger area you know one bucket of flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful for M Punch Wana? Ha! Chesa na miyang kasa mi pro adun. Let's say problems room. It's not my own way, dear mommy. Papa, Papa, Chesa na nyasa mkutua. I'm quite important, you know. I'm sure I'm not going to be busy. 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 I'm not going to
me do so sema na enkoye e person na my emre nyina na magina sabema na me ni bi fie for there e ho na nyina e ji arisa you heard that richard i have secret m point is my secret m point from your party clinic every who is the ultimate energy personality of the year at the 7th edition of your prestigious ghana energy award under the theme ghana's energy transition framework sector institutions has building block for the 2030 to 2040 target you can nominate yourself or an institution for categories such as ceo of the year energy investment impact award energy signature award endorsement validation industry partners media partners tv3 ghana energy awards seven years of redefining excellence Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, GSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. And Dr. Mahmoud Obamia has been campaigning ahead of November 4, addressing some MPP supporters. He talks about his strength in the strongholds of the NDC, which has also generated some reaction as well. Take a look. <laughs> Hey, I send the 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 power. Zongo for say, Omo Injin this MPP. Omo the Doctor Baumia beba. Zongo residents say they didn't believe that NPP will bring Doctor Baumia, but if they do, Zongo will vote massively for him. When Baumia stands, the North and Zongo communities will be won, and NDC won't stand a chance in the election. In the Volta region, I will garner many votes in the Volta region and all the NDC strongholds. That is why they fear Dr. Baumia. They know when I stand, I will give them a showdown. Well, so that's Dr. Mahmoud Baumia there. But then also, Kenny Japon has been talking. He says that the news of his stepping down is inaccurate. He is going into the November 4 contest to also show his mettle. Take a look. I'm not going to step down for anybody. If we have to come together, we come together. But coming together will depend on how they conduct this November 4th election. But when I'm doing it now fast, 26th of the you see, although well, essentially talking about his resolve to go into November 4 and uh, making reference to some of the incidents that dotted the uh, Special Delegates Congress and the fact that, in his view, the party has to correct those things going into November 4. But in the case of Alan Chimantin, who was withdrawn from the race, there were a number of big wigs of the party who declared support for him. And there's something very interesting happening over the last few days. Take a look at these names. Um, Nia equal to, he was in Alan Chimantin's campaign team, former High Commissioner to Canada, former Attorney General uh, John Peter Meu, the Minister for Railways Development, a member of Parliament for the Hawaii Constituency. He was in Alan's team. Abnao Sayasari, the Deputy Finance Minister, MP for Tuai, was in Alan's team. Patricia PJ, MP for Asqua Constituency, had declared support for Alan Chimanting. And then we, we had Carlos, Carlos Ahinkra and also Colin Sadumako, both members of parliament, Dema West, and then you also have Davis Opokuansa, Impriso MP, and Sylvester Tete, Botiano Inglesia, Manfro Constituency, member of parliament. Um, all these persons, in fact, there, there's another member of parliament for the Lambusier Constituency, uh, Bright Baligi, and then Katrina Feko. Uh, former tourism minister, all these people, big wigs of the party, who had declared support for Alan Chimanting. But then after his decision to withdraw from the race, a number of them have come out to state what their next step is. And that does not include going with Alan Chimanting if he decides to go independent. Take a look. These are comments associated with some of the names I've just run through. First off, the English Amalfro Member of Parliament, Sylvester Tetes, is quoted as saying, there's nothing like Alan Camp anymore. 
its MPP camp. Though regrettably, it was a painful decision, disappointed as they are, there's nothing they can do or say. He decided to bring the curtains down on his ambition. There's nothing they can do. So now he's committing, he says he decided to bring the curtains down and he's committing for him, Silver Satete, his next ambition is to the MPP camp. Take a look at the next person as well. David Ansopoku, I really do not think that Alan Chimantin would want to form his party or would want to go independent. We all supported him because it's NPP first. And I'm not sure he's going to disappoint the teaming supporters of his campaign. If he leaves NPP, he will not get any support. And all the MPs who supported him will not follow him. That's David Ansopoku. There, MP for the Empire's Constituency. Dr. Kwesi Amacho Boateng is a senior lecturer at the Political Science Department, University of Ghana, uh, Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology, Kiyo University. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, with these names that I've just run through, seen a number of the big ways of the party uh, now committing their support to the NPP and not Alan Chamanting's next step, which he's going to announce in the coming weeks. Do you see more of these? Big wigs also falling apart and supporting the party as again going with Alan Chamanti. There's one thing that to me should be clear to all of us. I'd like to believe that all those people who rally behind Alan Chamanti, they knew they were participating in the internal politics of the MPP. They were very comfortable with that. They had not breached any party group. Is a very normal development. I like to believe that people in the other camps, from Dr. Baromir to all the other contestants, the new members in the party had every right to support whoever they wanted to support. But the moment Alan leaves the party, ordinarily, I don't expect any person to follow him. Why should they leave the party because Alan is leaving? Did they go into the party because of Alan? And and it's because of this that I argued some time ago that Alan's political uh, ambition, which is to become the president of this country, had come to an end. And I still stand by that. One, if he decides to stay in the MPP, he's not becoming uh, I mean, the president any time soon. If you decide to stay in the MPP, look at the age of Dr. Bellamy. He is the future. It is not Alan Chemati. You know, his personality, his clout has not earned him the recognition that he desires from the party. So if people do any study anywhere and they come to a conclusion that uh, personalities are, you know, now the driving force, fine, that's what they are saying, but they don't reflect on the ground. They don't. Of course, personality, who hasn't got personality? Or the 10 contestants, who hasn't got personality? So exactly what is the issue there? If Alan decides to leave the party, that will be terrible. I've argued that in the fourth, not in the fourth republic, in Ghana's political history from 1951 to date, individuals who leave to start new political parties don't do well. We know what happened to those who left the UGCC with the exception of Nkoma. And Nkoma's case was different because Nkoma was the party, Nkoma was UGCC. He moved around the country to organize people for the party. So the rank and file in the party knew Nkrumah. Nkrumah was the face, the poster boy of the party. The More than 2,000 people are... They didn't really understand what was happening. They got their politics terribly wrong. You couldn't chase Nkrumah out of the party. The rank and file knew only him. The others were, as we have been given you know, by information from the literature. They were lawyers and they were busy practicing. They were busy working. That's even the reason why they had to get 
you know, someone to become full-time uh, officer of the party. They weren't ready to spend their time serving the interests of the party. So Nkrumah's case is unique, apart from Nkrumah. Any individual who left the party, the main party, has never done well. But you see, Dr. Bamia is making a, a bold claim that the, the NDC, quote-unquote, uh, fears him because he is going to win or pull votes in the NDC stronghold. But looking at all the factors at play, is it that straightforward? Dr. Amaji. There are a lot of dynamics in politics and time plays a, a significant role. The developments of the day also uh, matters a lot. So um, it is an interesting thing. If we want to use the outcomes of the two elections that the Bermia team up with Manado to, you know, uh, prosecute. You want to say that, yes, the MPP made gains in some areas that previously they had not done so. But, you know, a lot, a lot has changed since then. Generally, if we look at even Ghana's politics, you realize that even Jay Rollins, when he went into the second elections, their votes came down slightly. Even Jay Rollins, they say a similar thing happened to uh, President Kufo. So now that Ghanaians know Dr. Romia, he's not necessarily the same person that you know they saw some time ago. So I think over there we want to wait, we want to wait, and then we observe. You know, you know, other developments, and then we'll come out to see what we want to see. Indeed, we'll see how the coming days will look like. I thank you very much, Dr. Kwesi Amachi Boateng, Senior Political Science Lecturer at the Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology, Kenya State. Appreciate your time here on Ghana tonight. On behalf of the, rest of the team, thank you for staying with us. We're back again tomorrow, same time. I am Alfred Okonse. Do have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint, superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, simply superior.